Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about magnets and specifically how they apply to combat robots. They're a good way to get a little bit of extra downforce and get a little bit of extra traction in your wheels. So what I want to do is talk about in this video is some of the pros and cons of using them, some things that you might want to know going into using them, and then we're going to take my three pound combat robot long, long man and actually do all the calculations to find out how much downforce a specific magnet would give us and also what kind of impact that would have on the drivetrain. So let's get started. So let's first start off by talking about why you would want to use magnets. So let's kind of start with the pros of using magnets. So if we look at weight classes in combat robots, uh, you probably know that there's you know, different weight classes. There's an ant weight at one pound, a beetle weight at three pounds, et cetera, et cetera. And that means that you can only build up to that weight. The bot can't weigh any more than that. Uh, there's some special exceptions, but generally speaking, a beetle weight is only ever gonna be three pounds or under. This is Long Long Man. It is a three pound bot and it weighs, I think like 2.9 pounds, just under three pounds. However, by adding magnets across the bottom, I'm able to make the effective weight of it significantly higher. And what I mean by the effective weight is essentially how much weight it feels like it is because it's pulled down to the floor. So if I add 10 pounds worth of downforce to this, then it will be the three pounds of gravity and then the additional 10 pounds, it will feel like a 13 pound bot. If something's trying to lift me, it will feel like 13 pounds. If you have a spinner that is spinning upwards, it will feel like 13 pounds. So that is a huge advantage to kind of get around that three pound or you know, whatever the weight limit is, is you can make your bot heavier. The other pro to this is that also means that you're going to be pushing down on your wheels that much more. And if you've ever competed in combat robots, you know that traction is probably the most important thing to winning a match. So this will also increase your traction and increase your ability to drive, get around, and also push other robots. So at this point, you might be thinking, wow, magnets are pretty amazing. Why doesn't everyone use magnets? Well, there's a couple catches to this. The very first catch is not every event allows you to use magnets and not every event allows you to use beyond your weight in downforce on magnets. For instance, if you go to an event that limits the amount of downforce, they're basically gonna attach it to something magnetic and see if it can hold its own weight. If it can hold its own weight, that's too much magnetic power. Basically, they want to you to have less than the weight of your robot in magnetic downforce. So for instance, um, this guy is actually, I think we're gonna calculate this later, but it's over 10 pounds worth of downforce. So this is effectively like a 13 pound bot. This would be disqualified in many events because it has too much downforce. It can hold its own weight. I don't have anything magnetic here in front of me, but it can definitely hang upside down, drive along a wall, things like that. Um, so that is the first downside. You can only use so much. Um, the second downside is you're increasing the effective weight of this robot, and that's great and everything, but you're also increasing the load on the drivetrain. So this bot feels, according to the drivetrain, like a 13 pound bot. So that means that the drivetrain needs to be able to handle that. So you're gonna use more battery power, you're gonna put more strain on the drive, things like that. We'll get into those calculations later. Um, another downside is just driving in general. It is going to be a lot easier to get high-sided because you have magnets on the bottom of your bot. So if you rip something off of someone, that piece goes flying, a little screw, whatever it is, it's gonna wanna stick to your magnets. And then it's very easy to just get high-sided on that. The other thing is magnet bots don't tend to crab walk very well because they're kind of stuck down to the floor. And especially in the case of Long Long Man, when I lost one wheel, you're dead, you're out. There's no way that you can crab walk because you will just crab walk kind of in a circle and you'll get counted out. So be very careful about using magnets with a weak drivetrain or even with two wheel bots. I probably don't recommend it for two wheel bots because if you lose one drive, you're pretty much instantly out. So getting high side on things, putting extra strain on your drivetrain, not being able to go over a certain amount based on the event, check with your event organizer. These are some of the downsides to using magnets. Generally speaking, as a beginner, it's probably not a good idea to use magnets. They add a lot of complexity and they add a lot of challenges. If the floor isn't absolutely perfect, 
you're gonna ride over that seam. You might just get high sided and then you're dead, you're out. So magnets can be a bit of a challenge. However, there are certain types of bots where magnets can be very beneficial. Control bots, lifter bots, grapplers, things like that that absolutely rely on a solid drivetrain and maneuverability, those bots can greatly benefit from using magnets because a grapple bot or someone that's gonna be grabbing and lifting someone up, you really want that effective weight to be as high as possible. So if you can do a three pound bot that effectively is a six pound bot, you're always gonna win that pushing match and you're definitely gonna be able to lift people up, things like that. So there are some benefits to it. You just kinda of have to think about what your ultimate goal is. I don't really recommend just throwing magnets on every bot you have just so it can go faster and get more traction. There are some pretty significant downsides to it. So just something to consider when designing your bot. Okay, so let's actually look at some realistic calculations on magnets. I am here on a site called K&J Magnets. Um, I really, or K&J Magnetics. I really like this site because not only do they have a ton of magnets, they have this really cool calculator that we're going to be using as well. These are almost identical to the magnets I'm using on Long Long Man. Uh, mine are grade 52 instead of N42. So they're a little higher grade on the magnets and you know, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is essentially the magnets. One and a quarter inch diameter, eighth inch thick, and it has this pull force of about 16.3 pounds in a case one. We'll talk about that in a second. There are four of these magnets on the bottom of Long Long Man. So how do we calculate how much uh, downforce this magnet is going to generate in our application? If you go over here to the magnet calculator, let's go ahead and click on that. We're gonna select an N52 magnet. This was 1.25 diameter and yeah, it was an eighth of an inch thick. Is that right? Let's pull this open again. Yeah, eighth inch thick. And the distance. So this is very important. Magnets have a pretty strong fall off um, in terms of the magnet magnetic strength the further you get away from your steel floor. If you have the magnets touching, you're gonna get that whole 16 pounds or whatever it is. But the further away you get, the less it's gonna be. In my case, they're about a um, 0.25 inch away from the floor. So let's go ahead and hit calculate. So each one of these magnets is gonna have a pull force of 2.52. If we look over here at case one, case two, case three, you can kind of see there's different cases. So if it was between two steel plates, it's much different. Uh, magnet to magnet, it's different. But we're basically magnet to a steel plate, that being the floor. And you can see down here the fall off so if we get this just a tiny bit closer, we actually get a lot stronger um, force out of it. So something to keep in mind, but when you're designing, make sure you have this distance set. The other thing that I want to mention here before we move on is the magnetization direction. I don't know if this, yeah, here's a really great example of it. Be very careful of looking at the direction of the magnetization, especially if you're using a square or a rectangle magnet you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the poles go in the direction of your floor. Generally speaking, an axial magnetized magnet is gonna be what you need, but just pay attention to that. Okay, so now let's do some drivetrain calculation. Really quick before we get away from here, um, I want to show you a cool little fun feature about this calculator is that if, if and when you calculate your force, 2.5 pounds, you scroll down here, it will actually give you suggestions for a magnet that is similar to the size of the one that you put up here. So it's really great if I said, oh, that's a little bit too high, I want a one inch diameter, I'm gonna hit calculate, okay, that looks a little bit better, here are the magnets that meet that. So that's actually a pretty cool feature, so you know, props to K&J for making a really useful website. No sponsorship, nothing like that, just a really cool site that I found. Okie dokie, let's move over to the drivetrain calculation. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. So this is the Team Tentacle Torque and Amp Hour Calculator Reloaded. Um, this link, as with all the other links in the video, are down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. This is a good way to calculate how much power we're gonna need and all the other fun stuff that we're gonna be talking about. So the first thing we need to do is fill in all these values up top. And am I recording? Yes, I am. So 
you can drop this down and if your motor is in here that is really awesome consider yourself lucky but chances are it probably won't be especially if you're going to be using a brushless motor which i am so let's go ahead and calculate that this is the motor that i'm using in long long man i'm using one of these per side and there's a couple pieces of information that we need I need the KV rating. For anyone not familiar with a KV rating, the KV rating simply says for every volt that you put into the motor, this is the RPM that it's going to spin. So if I put one volt into this motor, it is going to spin at 3100 RPM. I'm going to be using a 16 volt battery, 16 times 3100, 49,600 RPM. So that is what a KV rating is. We're gonna need that. And then we're also going to need the max current. And for this guy, it is 5 amp. If you don't have the max current, you can generally guess it with the amount of information that is here. You can take the wattage and divide it by your volts. You know, you can do all sorts of things. You could just guess here as well, but we're gonna use 5 amps. So we're gonna go back to the calculator. I'm running this at 16. I'm gonna stall out at five. And this is a 3100. Now we need the torque constant. The torque constant is a lot like the KV rating in that it tells us how much torque there is per amp that we put into it. Here it is ounce inch per amp. So we gotta calculate that. This motor does not have the rating and most of these do not. Here is a really simple way to do it. I'm gonna open up a calculator. We're going to basically do 30 divided by the product of, um, is that the way I say it? Uh, pi times the KV. So 3100 is our KV times pi, 3.14, 9734. We're gonna take 30 divided by 9734. And this is gonna give us a result in Newton meters. We need ounce inches, no big deal. We're gonna convert that over. So 0.00308. 0 0.0308 newton meters into ounce inches at 0.436. And um, all of these things are gonna be links in the description below. Don't worry about it. So 0.436 ounce inches, 0.436 ounce inches per amp. Now we're good to go. Don't worry about this just yet. Now we're gonna select that we have a three pound bot actual weight. So remember, this is going to be 3 plus the 2.5 times 4 magnets. So that's going to be 13 pounds. We're going to have one motor per side. The gear ratio, this is going into a Servo City gearbox. So I'll show you exactly which one I'm using. Motors and actuators, motors, this motor, that motor, 122. This is the gearbox I'm using, and it is an 84 to 1. So we're going to go back here, 84 to 1. That means uh, this, this all looks good. The wheel diameter, these are um, 2.875, I believe. Doesn't really matter all that much. And that's pretty much it. I leave the tire coefficients alone. That doesn't really matter too much. Average peak draw, that doesn't matter too much. But what this means is we're gonna be drawing 3.67 amps. We're gonna have a theoretical top speed of five miles an hour. We're gonna peak at about seven amps. And here is our battery size. So it's really that simple. You can click on the acceleration calculator and kind of get some other ideas um, in a, I don't know, 12 foot arena, let's say, it's gonna take us 2.35 to get side to side, um, you know, things like this. It's a lot of interesting things that you can figure out and our effective pushing force is gonna be 11.7 pounds. So that's really all there is to it. Um, you just need to put in your voltage, the stall current, the KV rating of your motor, and then you need to calculate the um, constant torque by doing 30, my or 30 divided by the sum of 3.14 times your 3100 that will give you your newton meters you convert that into ounce inches put that in and then do all your calculations and you're good to go it's a lot of steps but you'll get used to it and it's pretty easy to do so really, that's about all I have for this video. Um, I guess if I was gonna sum this up in steps, it would be one, determine if 
your vents that you're going to allows magnets to determine if they have a steel floor. That's a big one I didn't talk about. And um, determine if your design even allows for magnets to be beneficial because they're really not beneficial on all robots. Then determine how much downforce you want to have. Then determine how it's gonna work with your drivetrain and if your drivetrain can handle it. Last step, profit, win some matches, I guess. So as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you out in using magnets in your next bot, or at least figuring out the drivetrain calculations if you're not gonna be using magnets. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.